friends, I am so excited today to show you a little short behind the scenes peek of some troubleshooting that I had to do with the wedding Hoyas. Bloom and grow, YouTube show. So I have a whole planty wedding series coming in a couple of months overviewing my wedding and all of the different ways that I incorporated plants into it. But one of the big things at my wedding was that I gave away and also incorporated into the tablescape Hoya hearts. Um, and the whole thing was take a little piece of our hearts home with, uh, with you after, after the wedding. And it was amazing. But a week before my wedding, I got 150 Hoya hearts delivered to my freaking house. <laughs> and there were so many crazy things going on with the wedding. I had a little bit of a meltdown. I unpacked all these Hoya hearts, which by the way, were amazing and gorgeous. They came from Little Prince of Oregon. Uh, they have a coupon code for us in the show notes if you want. But anyway, I got these Hoya hearts. I kind of had a meltdown with having to figure out how to keep them alive and thriving in order to get them to my wedding. I had about a week and I didn't have the right lighting situation in my house for 150 Hoya hearts, right? So I had a little bit of a meltdown and I called my friend Leslie Halleck. Leslie is a horticulturist um, and Leslie kindly coached me through how to set up all of my grow lights <laughs> in order to not burn my Hoya hearts and also not give them too little light. Um, the stakes were so high for these Hoya hearts because they were for my wedding. So I wanted them to be in perfect shape and I was kind of overwhelmed and manic in, in this moment as any bride to be or, or recent bride would probably understand. So I'm giving you a behind the scenes look at this kind of coaching with me and Leslie because Guys, we launched the Bloom and Grow Garden Society, the virtual garden society for our community. I don't know if you've heard about it on social media, but it is my premium tier of the Garden Party platform, and we are calling it our one-stop shop for plant parenthood growth. And part of the, bar the Garden Society is getting exclusive monthly educational lectures and coaching calls with Leslie, who is going to be our horticulturist in residence. Leslie has decades of experience in the hort industry, many degrees in horticulture and the garden society is a place for plant parents who are looking to kind of take their education to the next level and go beyond a lot of the free stuff that you see on youtube on um, podcasts that i provide on instagram and get real high quality education from true experts and go beyond the basics of plant care, right? Our first lecture is the science of plant dormancy and understanding exactly what plant dormancy is, what is happening in our plants and how we apply for that. So when you join us, you get monthly node of knowledge lectures, nodes of knowledge, which is what we're calling them, like the science of plant dormancy. But you also get the opportunity to attend our AHAs, which are our Ask Our Horticulturist Anythings, a riff on AMAs where you can show up to a Zoom call once a month with Leslie, a horticulturist with decades of experience in plant care and plant care education and troubleshoot your own personal plant collection with her or take what you're learning in the Node of Knowledge lectures to the next level by asking clarifying questions or applying it to your personal collection. So we think it's an amazing deal and an amazing opportunity just to show up and talk with a horticulturist once a month about your collection, let alone also getting exclusive um, educational content every month and also monthly calls with me, Growing Joy Calls, where we explore the plant person connection and how to use plants to bring more joy in our life. We have founding member discounts running through Tuesday, 25% off an annual freaking subscription. It's a great deal. If you're interested in joining us, if you feel called, click the link below. We'd love to see you in the Garden Society, but until then, please <laughs> watch my manic state while I'm troubleshooting my lighting setup with Leslie. Um, and this is just a short idea of what you might be able to get in the AHAs. For me, I really just wanted to make sure that my lights were set up properly so I didn't scorch or under light my plants um, for this very intense week that I needed these plants to be perfectly healthy for the wedding. Um, but think about all of the different things that you could do when you show up to an AHA as well. Okay, here's Leslie. So I've got 150 Hoya hearts right now and I really need help troubleshooting the sure. light situation. So I'm thinking I need to do some lighting. So this is what I've set up, Leslie, and I need you to help me. So I've got the Soltec Vita bulb in that guy. Okay. And these are my two seed starting lights, but this is just what I have in my house. So 
I was thinking we could troubleshoot. I've got my PAR meter. Um, Cause I feel like with these, I can't figure out how high to keep them above the Hoyas. And these have a 12 or an 18 hour timer available. And then the Vita grow bulb, I have my own timer so I can make it as many as I want. What I might suggest mm -hmm. is to change the orientation of those lights instead of hanging them vertically, like the uh, uh, perpendicular, like you have them, I would turn them so that they're in a line and I would raise those lights a little bit higher and then you'll get a much bigger footprint of light over the whole group of plants. Exactly. You mean like use these two and hang this one like that and then Correct. The them like that. Correct. Yes. Yes. So turn. So right now, you know, you've got that block of Hoya and the lights are perpendicular, right? I would move the fixtures so that they are, um, hanging in a straight line side by side one another. So I'm going to put up a whiteboard here. So here is your, here's going to be my very <laughs> rudimentary drawing here. Um, so here is your, here's your window. Oops, sorry. It's a little hard to draw on here, right? Here's your window, Ooh. right? And here's all the Hoyer on this table. What I want you to do is take the two fixtures. If there's room, you might need to extend the table and run them down the middle of the table so that your lights are hanging this way right and then all your hoya are around them and then i want you to raise the lights up higher okay does that make Even sense we've got these long guys so if i was to do that this way you'll be able to get more light to more of the plants more evenly versus all that light being concentrated on that very middle group of plants this is what happens when you commit to gifting live plants for your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> it adds a whole new layer of responsibility I know. to your situation. All right, there you go. Oh, they fit perfectly. Yeah, perfect. And then, so then hang your lights just as you would hang them. Yeah horizontal parallel to the frame. Yeah. So when you're seed starting, obviously, and that's why these jumpstart fixtures have those ratcheted um, pulleys on them. When you're starting seeds, obviously you need to get those lights pretty close to your seeds and your seedlings, three to four inches. But for more mature plants or as seedlings grow, then you want to raise that up higher. And in this situation, you're just trying to provide supplemental light to these Hoya. So you don't necessarily want to get them too hot or get that light source too close Plus the closer the lamp is, the less light distribution you're going to get to those plants that are out to the edge of the table. So our goal here is to, I would raise those lights all the way up. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Use your little pulley. Yep. Yeah, raise them all the way up, all the way up to the top of the fixture. I think we'll be good. Right. So now you can see that you're getting light to the plants at the edge of the table now versus just the plants in the middle of the table. Okay. So you don't necessarily need a super intensive PPFD, <laughs> if you will, on those middle plants. We're just trying to get enough supplemental light to all the plants on the table. Should I maybe then move the Soltec light to hit the ones in the middle? Um, yeah, you could probably even just raise that up a little higher too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's good. And then, so now in terms of PPFD, should I do, um, these are getting 99.6 U-mol, 100 U-mol. So should I put them on 12 or 18? Let's see. You said they're getting about 100? Yeah, about 100. Uh, yeah, I, I, could, I would say, because you've got your big windows there, and they're that, gonna get light. They're going to get direct Western light uh, for the second half of the day. Yeah, I mean, I think if you ran the 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 lamps for you know, even even just you know eight to ten hours just for that supplemental lighting, it would probably be fine because they've got additional natural light coming through the window. So you're just looking to supplement them, kind of in know. the morning when they're not getting the light. So maybe what I'll do is these only have twelve or eighteen options. So I'll run these for twelve. Exactly. And I'll do this just in the morning before. Yeah. Western comes in. Right. I think that would be good. Amazing. Right. Oh, Again, we're not necessarily looking to shove them out into what would be, you know, full sun conditions at this point, because that could have the opposite result that we're looking for. We're just trying to keep them happy 
you know, until the wedding and make sure that they're not sitting um, in too much unused water at the soil level. And here's one more question about Hoya hearts. It seems like they have a front and a back. Sure. Should I aim the the front at the light? They can photosynthesize on both sides, right? Oh yeah, sure. So basically that's just the top and the bottom of the leaf. That leaf has just been stuck upright vertically in that pot. But just as with any leaf, you have an upper um, surface to the leaf and you have a lower surface to the leaf. And there are gen generally more somata on the lower side of the leaf. Uh, it's really not going to matter too much. Okay. Um, but what you don't want to do is obviously face that front side of the heart, which you are probably going to put forward on the table too close to a light source, right? Like you kind of had it because you might have ended up scorching some of that foliage. So, yeah. You're the best, Leslie. Thanks for this AHA. My pleasure. <laughs> Do